everybody, I'm Lisa Roberry, your independent Sensi consultant. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Q&A series. You guys, I knew it had been a minute since we had sit down and had a chit chat Q&A session together. I did not realize it has been a year. <laughs> It has been a year since we have sat down and hung out and just did a little Q&A session together. Um, I, I, I thought we had already been here in the house. I thought we had recently moved and I had done a Q&A. Nope. <laughs> I sat down, I was like, you know what, it's been, it's been a few months, so I think it's time. And I went to sit down and um, see what questions had come in in the last Q&A, and the last Q&A was titled December Q&A Part 2. And that's December, like, 2021. <laughs> We're in December 2022 now, and I'm like, what? Are you serious? And I know, so it was before I had my surgery and I know things got crazy, you know, just healing and recovering from surgery. And then we were house hunting and then we moved out of state. And then we just kind of were trying to find our new normal, our new schedule, just getting like, you know, settled in and here we are and it's December. <laughs> So I love doing this Q&A series. I hope you guys like it. I know you did like it last year when we had done it together, um, but this it, I didn't just drop it because I didn't enjoy doing it. I actually really do enjoy doing them. I enjoy watching them. It kind of gives you a chance to get to know people a little bit better and just kind of feels like you're just kind of sitting down and hanging out with a friend, right? So um, they're videos that I really enjoy doing. And like I said, they're videos I enjoy watching as well. So if you sent in a question last year, you probably don't care for the answer anymore. <laughs> But I'm going to go ahead and address them anyway. And in case you are new here, hello and welcome. I hope you'll stick around and I hope you enjoy the Q&A session as well. I will tell you now, if you don't already know, I am a chatty Cathy. Um, so this becomes a little bit of story time and just, like I said, just a chit chat session. Um, so if you have any questions you would like to be answered on a Q&A uh, video here with me, you can either leave a comment down below on this video or you can send your question. Um, you can email it into me directly at roberrywax at gmail.com and I will answer it in the next Q&A, which I am not going to make you wait a year for. <laughs> Typically, with this series, what I was doing was a Q and A once a month. So that way it gave me time to, um, to see these questions that are coming in. And then it gives us time to sit down and chit chat over what questions came in over the last month. I don't typically make it wait a year, but here we are. It's December. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. So anyways, we do have some questions to go over together. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the first question is from our friend Keto Chan. And Keto Chan says, I'd love a Roberry scents that make my mouth water list. So basically anything bakery or fruity is going to make my mouth water. Um, I love all things bakery. Bakery is always like my number one and they do actually make my mouth water to like think of scents just off the top of my head. Definitely banana nut bread, definitely sweet plum pastry. Those are scents, uh, even lemon coconut chiffon. Like those are scents that just instantly make my mouth water. Um, a couple other scents more fruity would be like rainbow sherbet, hope it comes back for spring and summer, cocoa lime, those are scents that just like totally get the mouth jets going. I love it and I, I warm them. It's not something where like, I know some people are like, yeah, I don't wanna warm scents that make me hungry. I'm like, I'm here for the scents that make me hungry and like crave like sweets or fruit or what have you. So um, I, those types of scents would be the scents that make my mouth water. Okay, the next one is from our friend Carrie, and Carrie says, Hi Lisa, I may have missed the answer from a past video. It's been a minute. <laughs> but once we've stocked up on a bar after it retires, is there a safe way of moving moving it from, let's say, monthly to bi-monthly without losing it? Thanks for all you do. We appreciate it. So what Carrie is talking about is um, in terms of Sensi Club. When we are moving bars from frequencies, you can change them from quarterly to bi-monthly to monthly. Whatever works best for you, you can totally move them around and switch them up on your own schedule. However, I don't think there is a way to just move like one bar. You would have to move as of now, to my knowledge, I haven't really tried messing around with this, but 
um, just from what I've seen, I think you can only move like the entire frequency. So if you have, if you have a quarterly club and you want to move like one bar, I don't think you can move just one bar. I think you have to move the entire frequency of quarterly to monthly, bi-monthly, what, what have you, but you're not going to lose anything by, by moving the frequency. You just have to move the entire frequency is, is all. So I hope that helps. Okay, and this next question comes from our friend Brenna and Brenna says thanks for the videos I have two questions number one Are there any scents in your club that you find yourself not reaching for even though you love it? Um, for me No, okay, so yes and no there are scents in my club that I have that I love that are more seasonal so like I have rainbow sherbet, I have cocoa lime, I have those in my club. I'm not reaching for them this time of year, but they are some of my go-tos during the spring and summer months. So, and then vice versa, like my sweet plum pastry, that's one I absolutely can't live without, but I don't really reach for it during the spring and summer months, more so the summer months when it's 110 outside. <laughs> I'm not really feeling like the warm, heavy bakery scents. Um, so like those I keep in my club and then I use them up during like the seasonal specific like season when I am normally wanting to grab for it if I have a bar in my club and it goes for like the entire year <laughs> or like during that season I'm like yeah I just I like let's just say there's crimsonberry Christmas which is definitely a wintry scent it's one I really really enjoy I but I think I wasn't really reaching for it enough and um, I wound up removing it from my club so if I find myself in that season I'm not reaching for it or I'm not craving it then I'll go ahead and remove it from my club I give it a lot of thought <laughs> if you have seen me go through my Scentsy Club edits there are some struggles <laughs> there's a lot of hemming and hawing um, so I just I find that if I'm not reaching for it I I'd rather make the room for another bar because you guys have seen I have a healthy Scentsy Club subscription and I just I don't want the dead weight in there <laughs> if I'm just being honest like I just if I'm not reaching for it I'd rather like sit, between bring back my bar between the limited time offers that come and go um between the change over with the catalogs we're getting ready to switch over from fall and winter season over to spring and summer in March. So come February, I'm going to start making some edits, removing the scents I know are coming back spring for spring and summer that are already in my club, but they're coming back and putting in some of my fall and winter favorites that I can't live without for the, for the next season in case they don't come back. So if there's a scent I'm not reaching for, I just, it just gets, it gets the cut. It's, it's got to. So even though I may not reach for it during a specific season. If it's not spring and summer, if I'm reaching for it in the fall and winter time, it can stay. So that's fine. You know what I mean? So as long as I'm reaching for it at some point during the year, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, question number two, and this is why these videos are so long. <laughs> Question number two, does Scentsy have a method of what scents they add to catalogs? Like our popular scents of the month brought back the following catalog. Thank you. So I'm actually glad, I'm actually glad that I waited on this because I actually do know the answer for it. I would, I just assumed, and I, I, I guess I'm kind of right with my assumptions, but um, they do. So if it's popular, then they're going to add it to the catalog. It just is honestly based on popularity. So I had the opportunity to attend a training um, here in Idaho. The Sensi Home Office is just a few cities over. And so it's just like a 20, 30 minute drive for me. So um, I was able to attend a training for star directors and we got a chance to talk with a lot of the um, the higher ups that work at home office. And um, I got a chance to sit down with an amazing man who uh, develops the fragrances, the non-licensed fragrances for Scentsy. And I, it was really, I wish I would have like sat with him earlier on in the night because I would have picked his brain a lot more than I did. Um, but he, he did break it down and he's like, you know, if there, you know, People wonder why, why does Snowberry go away? Or why does Jammy Time go away? Or why, why do these scents go away? It's because they're not selling. So if they're not selling, then they'd rather like remove them from the catalog and make space for maybe scents of the month or new releases that might be more popular. So if it's not, if it's not, 
uh, if it's not popular, if they're just making the bars just to make them, it doesn't, it's not beneficial for Scentsy. So, um, so I hope that kind of answers your question. If they are, if it is a super popular scent of the month, um, they do consider adding it to the catalog. It's not necessarily every single popular scent of the month, but that is something they definitely take into consideration. So, uh, but it is kind of like, it's kind of a bummer when you see like some of your favorite scents like snowberry, like honey pear cider, like apple butter frosting that you're like, what What was Scentsy thinking when they decided not to bring the scent back? It's just simply because it wasn't selling. So if there is a scent <laughs> that you love that you don't wanna see not return, um, or if you wanna see a scent of the month be added to the seasonal catalog, buy it. <laughs> Make it make it so that Sensi sees that it is a popular scent and that it's worth adding to the seasonal catalog. So there's that. I hope that I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your question, Brenna. Next one is from my girl Amber. Hello, Amber. So Amber's question is: Is there a way to change the date your Sensi Club ships? Mine ships on the 23rd of the month. I would rather it ship sometime earlier in the month so I can get my whiff box and scent of the month sooner. Um, I wish. I really wish, and that is something that I did uh, submit to the idea share. There's like an idea share uh, section in the workstation uh, where consultants can give like suggestions on things to implement or change or what have you. So that is something that I get asked all the time. Hey, can I ha can I change the processing date to beginning of the month? Unfortunately, you can't. Once you have that Sensi Club subscription set up, you're not able to change the processing date. I really hope that's something that they can change. But as of now, the only way to change your processing date is if you cancel your Sensi Club subscription and start a new one at the beginning of the month when you want it to process and choose to have it process right away. I wish there was another way because if you cancel your Scentsy Club subscription and you have any retired bars in your club, you're losing all of your retired bars, which is so heartbreaking. So hopefully that's something that they will implement a change in the future at some point. I don't know how hard that is to make happen, um, but I think that would be something really beneficial to be able to do. Okay, hope that helps. <laughs> Next one is from my friend Madeline. So Madeline says, regarding storing your warmers when you move, a lot of homes in Idaho have basements. Basements are amazing for storing things. So I know she didn't actually ask a question here, but because we have now moved, <laughs> we don't have a basement, although it's something that we're kind of toying with the idea of like, can we add a basement? Is that something that'd be super hard to do? Like we're just, in fact, Sean and I just were talking about this just last night. Like not even, it's not even really like in the plans or anything per se. It's just something that like, hey, can you add a basement and have it not like cost an arm and a leg? I mean, it's gonna cost an arm and a leg because you're essentially adding onto your house. But um, yeah, something that we've kind of toyed with. Our house does not have a basement, it does have a crawl space, but that's not a basement in any kind of way. But we do have a pretty decent sized garage here at the newer house. It's not even a new house anymore <laughs> because we moved here back in March. But um, we, Sean, my amazing husband, built some shelves in the garage and that's where I store all of my Scentsy warmers. In the old house in California, I had them stored in these like workbench situations in my office and it just, it looked like a mess. So this is, organized a little bit better and it's nice because it's all in one place so um it's i know when i need to go grab a warmer or a warmer box i just head out to the uh to the garage and i grab what i need and then it goes back out there and it's out of sight so really really nice um while i would love a basement and i would totally use it for storage as of now there's no basement so my storage is in my garage by the way, if you are storing anything in your garage, I do not recommend to store your um, wax. Do not store your wax in the garage. Um, during the winter, you'll be just fine. During the summer, you will lose all of your wax. <laughs> Unless you live somewhere that doesn't get hot at all, which I don't know where that, that place exists, but just store your wax, or sorry, just store your warmers, not your wax. Also, if you are storing your warmers, I also learned this the hard way, if you are storing your warmers in your garage, Make sure when you are boxing your warmers back up that the warmer dish is clean of any wax. Don't get lazy. I used to get lazy, not anymore. Um, I would just box up the warmer and leave the leave the wax in the warmer dish and just box it up and I'll take care of it when I need to use it again. And then we moved. <laughs> 
and then we moved and whatever warmers I wasn't using at the time they stayed in my hot garage and so I was like getting some of my holiday warmers and stuff out and the wax was it was a mess I was able to clean them up like there weren't none none of my warmers or anything that I unboxed up like the wax had we had a situation during the summer um, none of them were like ruined or anything but it just it just made a mess and it wasn't it wasn't pleasant so I hope that helps for anybody who's looking for storing advice <laughs> okay next one's from my friend Laura hi Laura her question is what is the worst wax accident you've ever had? I actually pour my wax into the garbage before using the cotton cleanup for economic reasons, but I'm always really careful as to not have a wax in it. I have a fear of spilled wax down in the warmer. I had a candle holder break once and wax went everywhere. Just interested if you have any horror stories. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't really have any horror stories. There have been two decent wax accidents that I have had. Um, one of them was actually not my fault. <laughs> the worst one was actually Sean's fault, my husband's fault. Um, my wax accident, um, I, I wanna say, was it even me? We'll just say it was me. Um, I did knock a warmer. It was in our living room in our old house. No wax accidents here yet, knock on wood. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was in our old house and it was like, it was on our like end table that was next to like the doorway, like going into the kitchen. And I think just, I either knocked the end table when I was walking by or I knocked the warmer somehow, it spilled and wax on the wall. That was a bummer. You can remove the wax, but you typically can't remove the staining on the wall, especially with that like matte paint. Yeah, that's a good time. We had to repaint the whole house when we sold it anyway, so it wasn't a big deal, but um, wanna know what was a big deal. And after we already had the entire inside already repainted to get ready to sell the house was when my husband went to go turn off our warmer that was on the top of like the top of our staircase um, on our like linen cabinets or what have you. <sighs> he went to unplug it and he knocked it over <laughs> and the wax, it just, it rolled and the wax went everywhere and it was all over the wall that we just had repainted. That was fun. <laughs> I told him, I was like, this is why you don't touch my warmers. Don't turn them off. There's no need to turn them off. Don't do it. Just, just leave them alone. <laughs> just leave them alone. It's not hurting you don't touch my warmers so uh, it, it was fine we got it cleaned up it was it was all good but that was definitely that was the worst because it knocked over and then it rolled and it was great and that warmer had like a bunch of texture and stuff to it so the wax just got really all up in the nooks and crannies i was able to get it all cleaned up i still have that warmer and i love it um but yeah i was just more we were more like oh my gosh we literally like we had just painted the walls to sell our house like a couple days prior <laughs> Like you can't even make that stuff up. So that's really the only like horror story. Okay, next one is from our friend Laura Beth and Laura Beth says, I'm loving how thorough your videos are. Thank you so much, I try. You're a pleasure to watch, thank you so much. Can you please go in depth on the clean clothes scents? I love Luna, but the laundry stuff in Luna is disappointing. Yeah, Luna's probably the lightest in the laundry line that I have tried personally. Um, for me, the scents that are the strongest, and I don't know if you're looking for like laundry specific scents, um, I would say if you're looking for or like specific laundry scents, like you want it to smell like clean laundry, like you're just your basic clean laundry, I would say clothesline or Scentsy Clean. Those are absolutely like, those are good and strong and they're a good like clean laundry scent. Um, the other two I would recommend is Pink Cotton and Lavender Cotton. Those are good too. Not your typical laundry scents. Well, maybe, la maybe Lavender Cotton would be. Uh, <clears throat> fluffy Fleece, also Fluffy Fleece is, is good and strong too but not your like typical laundry scent. So if you're looking for more like typical laundry, clothesline, Scentsy Clean. If not, pink cotton, lavender cotton, fluffy fleece. Really good though. Okay, so I hope that helps. <laughs> Let me know. Um, at this point, you're pro you've probably found something much stronger. <laughs> okay, next one's from our friend Paula. And Paula says, how close together do you keep your warmers? Can you do a walkthrough of your home? So I will actually put a card up here somewhere of my most recent like warmer tour. Um, we went through the house and I showed you what I have out for the holidays. Um, I will change out some of the warmers after Christmas and just make them like more my like winter specific uh, warmers. So as you can see, 
I have some warmers pretty close together here in this room. This is not typical. It's just basically for display. So it, it looks cute in my background, <laughs> but um, typically, but I do have like, I have some warmers that are fairly close together just because I, I, I want to. It's not necessarily because I can't smell the scent. I can I can smell the scent. <laughs> I've got plenty of warmers, um, but I it just it just works. Uh, so <laughs> I, I so like I said, if you haven't had a chance to see my warmer tour, um, I will I'll link it down below. I'll also put the card up here, but um, you can see how close I have my warmers. I've I've got warmers all over the place. It's it, like if you are just looking for like bare minimum. You're just looking for like I would say like for me like in our rooms and our like our like guest rooms and stuff I like one full size warmer is fine a mini warmer for the bathroom is fine um, I'd say kitchen like one full size warmer like if you're looking for a bare minimum like that should be it should be fine but I I, I have a lot of warmers <laughs> and I like them a lot so I just if I've got an outlet and if I've got space I'm gonna find a warmer for it so hope that helps. Okay, next one is from my girl Anna. So hi Anna. And she says, how far will you guys move from each of your parents after the move? Also, Sean's job, will he just move into the Idaho version? Um, that work is so important, I just hate to see him leaving. So a few questions here. So clearly we've already moved. <laughs> um, so my mom is still in California. Uh, Sean's dad and stepmom are still in California. So it's it's not, crazy far it's about an eight hour drive if we're gonna drive and it depends on like the weather and, and all of that but about an eight hour drive um but a flight is only like an hour so super super easy in terms of like traveling um we just live a couple minutes from sean's mom <laughs> so sean's mom is here uh sean's stepdad is here sean's sister is still in california as well but um but yeah so we're super close to sean's mom and then um our other family is still in california as far as Sean's job. At this point, you guys already know. So Sean did leave his career in law enforcement. Um, this was a decision that wasn't made lightly because it is something that he worked so hard for and something that he did amazing work in for 15 years. And he made a he made a true difference. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he spent several years uh, working with the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. And it they really did an amazing job and not a job that um, is taken lightly and not a job that a ton of people really want to do, but it is so important. And the task force is filled with amazing people who make a difference every single day. So it's not that he didn't want to do it. He made, he made, he made a huge difference in a lot of people's lives for the jobs, for the job that he had done. <clears throat> but it was just a matter of, you know, life is short and we weren't happy in California and we wanted to move and so um, we decided to move and we were in the position where uh, we could do this sensey thing full-time together so um, while that was kind of a scary thing to think about um, it was something that we definitely wanted to do and pursue and you know if if he needed to um, get back into that line of work there were some options that that he had but um, but he hasn't and it's been it's been wonderful because that job was so stressful for him and for me uh, as as his wife you know doing search warrants and things like that it's just it's so scary especially in these days uh, you just don't know what's gonna happen and uh, it was it was terrifying to be honest and there was a lot of stress that was put on him every single day um, having to go to court is not something that's fun and um, you know we saw a huge difference just in moving moving out of California moving to a slower pace lifestyle um, being able to work from home and we do we work like I, I don't want anyone to think that like we just like sit on the couch and eat bonbons we, we don't we work every single day um, he, you know, we've found our groove, we found our routine, um, what his place is in the business, what mine is in the business and how we work together and how we better each other. Um, so it's, it's, it's been amazing. And, um, you know, definitely something that like, he feels like he definitely made a difference in his time in law enforcement, but now it's time to kind of put him first and do something that he really enjoys. He really does enjoy the sensey stuff. And he does, he's very, um, he's very technical and he's, he's very efficient. <laughs> and so he sees like my systems and things that I have in place. And he, he, that was the first thing that he said, basically for like 
at least once or twice a day <laughs> when we first started doing this together was there's got to be a more efficient way or there's got to be a more efficient way or a better way or you know we, we can do this we can better this so um you know we definitely we work really well together and he um makes me better <laughs> too so um so no he he is full fully on board with the sensi stuff um like i said if if this didn't work out you know we did have kind of some options on you know what he would do out here in terms of that line of work but it was not going to be a sworn position um it would be helping like the police department with forensics or things like that but not like go out on patrol or anything like that again so but we're happy we're super super happy and yes that his job is very very important and just know that there are there's a whole task force for what he was doing and filled with really amazing people who um, continue to just better the world every single day okay next one is from my friend chris hi chris so she says if you make another video in the new house will you be keeping the same overall color scheme lots of new furniture keeping most of what you have uh for now or forever also is there a new place yet <laughs> again this is a year later <laughs> moving vlogs decorating vlogs having melanie come over to shop with you vlog <laughs> vlog 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 so love this clearly you guys know the answer to a lot of these so um yes there there is another there is another video even though it's delayed <laughs> here it is um so we actually did not keep the overall same color scheme and it's funny because i thought we would um in our house in california it was all like earth tones and tans and browns and all of that and then we moved here and it's all like whites and grays and <laughs> so it's totally opposite pretty much um as far as uh, lots of new furniture. So we, oh gosh, did we get any new furniture? Um, we got some pieces in our, some Ikea pieces for like shelving, um, <clears throat> in our living room to put next, like onto either side of our fireplace. But like we didn't get new couches or new, um, like end tables or anything. Cause it still worked. Like, I don't know. I just feel the couches will be replaced. The, the couches are brown and not that they look out of place or anything because it is it's not like a dark dark brown um but when they are replaced i think we'll, we will go with more of a gray um color but you know i just feel like the couches work fine <laughs> so i just feel like i don't really want to replace them just to replace them because of the color so other than that like we did get a new dining room set we did get a new we got our new office set up um I think that's the only real like furniture we got, which you guys will have seen. We, 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 we vlog. <laughs> so we vlogged when we got everything. So, um, if you are interested in checking out the weekend vlogs, it's just, it's just a bunch of randomness, <laughs> but you'll see more of our like personal lives, I guess. Um, so yes, yeah, the vlogs aren't going anywhere. Although we're not vlogging at the moment, we'll be vlogging again in the new year, but, um, yeah, the vlogs will always be, they'll always be there. Uh, let me see here. Is there a new place yet? Yep. <laughs> so we had, when did we go? So I had my surgery December 21st of last year. And then we were go, we took the drive to go house hunting. Like, gosh, it was like six weeks after I think. And then it was, this was the first house. This was the first house on our house hunting adventure that we saw. It wasn't even on our radar. We just wound up arriving here from driving. We got here earlier than expected and told our, our real estate agent. And he was like, Hey, well, these houses that we, we have appointments to go look at, they they're all being lived in. So why don't we go check out this house just over here? It's brand new. Nobody's there. So why don't we just kill, kill some time and check it out? course it's brand new it's brand new and it's perfect <laughs> so we were like okay so then but we still went and we saw the other couple of houses and they needed some work like here and there and then we were just like but there is the new house <laughs> so we wound up with the new house of course so if you haven't had a chance to check out the house hunting vlog it was kind of fun so uh you can check that out uh let me see here moving vlogs yep did the moving vlogs decorating vlogs i don't know i don't really have like I don't know. I'm not like a good interior decorator or anything. So I feel, I don't know that you guys would want to see me like decorate. 
I'm not good at that. That's what I have Melanie for. <laughs> Melanie is my bestie, as you guys know. Uh, she has a channel here, uh, Mr. Kong's Mom. She is the guru for all things beauty and skincare, holiday decorating. Absolutely, we have the same love for home fragrance. So if you hear me talk about Melanie, that's who it is. Thanks so much, Chris. Okay, next one is from our friend Jennifer, and Jennifer says, I'm needing a suggestion to mix blueberry cheesecake. I've tried to, I tried to give a go a second time, and it smells so odd, a weird sour note. So you're not the only one who gets that sour note. Um, there's quite a few people who do get that sour note. I don't, but one thing I would recommend is try mixing with vanilla bean buttercream. Vanilla bean buttercream is gonna give you that richness. It's gonna keep it bakery, but it's giving you that like sweet richness that may mellow out that sour note if you're still looking for a mix. <laughs> Here we are a year later. You're like, I'm still waiting on your answer. Try vanilla bean buttercream. If if you watch this, if you're still hanging out with me um, and you found a different mix, let me know down below in the comments if you found a mix that you that you really liked for it. Okay, next one is from our friend Karen. Karen says, do you think the milk glass element warmer would double as a candle warmer considering it since it's on sale? So it's not on sale right now because <laughs> it's been it's been a year. Um, but the milk glass warmer, so the milk glass warmer is an element warmer. So it doesn't take the heat from a light bulb. Rather, it takes the heat from a heating plate that the, that the dish sits on. You'll see a lot of different candle warmers that are kind of set up the same way. Um, but our element warmers don't have a high enough heat to actually double as a candle warmer. I did try this before with a warmer that was the same design in that like short kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a pedestal kind of a, a design with the with the heating element and then the glass dish or the ceramic dish just sits on top. So you would take the, I took the, uh, the dish off and then put the candle warmer on or the candle on top of the element warmer turned it on and it it just doesn't get hot enough to melt through like a jar candle you may get a little bit of pooling out at the bottom but it's not going to pull all the way through maybe it might work for like a tea light <laughs> or something but something really small but really it our heating elements have such low wattage uh, because our wax is so soft that it doesn't take a lot to melt it so having to try to heat up the glass and heat up the wax and then throw the fragrance it's really having to work pretty hard so those um those candle warmers have a higher wattage because it has to it has to perform a little bit better if that makes sense I hope that helps. <laughs> okay, next one is from our friend Jessica. Jessica says, does Sensi have a recycling program for packaging or the old pods? That would be amazing. As of now, they don't. Um, the, the pods would be a perfect example because it's just a plastic casing that I could imagine that they could reuse. But as of now, they don't. Um, I would say for you, um, there is there are some different ways that you can reuse clamshells. Um, you can... Use these for paints. If you are into arts and crafts, I just took my, my bar out here. Um, if you are into arts and crafts, this works great to keep your paints fresh. So you can just put a little bit of paint in one of these cubes here. You can close it up when you're not using the paint and it'll stay it'll stay nice and wet and fresh and it, it won't dry out. Um, you can also use these for earrings to store your earrings. You can also, you can use these for all kinds of things. Um, I've seen people put like change in here to separate their change if you wanted to do that um, or you can just straight up recycle it through recycling so you can you can do that too but um as of right now since he doesn't have like an actual recycling program it would be it would be super cool if they did uh, but as of right now they don't so there's that sorry Okay, next one is from our friend Christine. And Christine says, I have the same warmer as the one over your left shoulder in this video. It is so bright. Do you have any tips to tone it down? So she was referring to, I think it was the Glisten. I think it was the Glisten warmer, but you'll see plenty of brightness here uh, in, in this Scentsy room. A lot of the glass warmers are brighter than say some of our ceramic warmers. So you, it, you get that like kind of overwhelming like brightness. Um, some people are sensitive to it. Some people it's distracting. Some people just don't like the extra brightness. So one thing I would recommend is definitely using the colored bulbs. So we have colored bulbs in 25 watts, 20 watts, 15 watts. So you can totally tone it down with an orange bulb. Or if you want to get kind of fun for the holidays, you can do a green bulb or you could do a red bulb. We also have purple. We also have blue. So there's some different options. But I'd say if you're wanting still the same look, um, but you just want to tone it down, I would definitely say going with the orange bulb is definitely a great way to go. I hope that helps. 
Okay, and next question is from my friend Diane, and Diane says, I know it's not Sensi related, but I'm just wondering if you're moving to a larger house, and if it is, it, if it is, are you going to get more warmers? Sincere, thanks, Diane. So, here we are. <laughs> Um, we did move to a slightly larger house, not, not massively larger, but we do have some additional square footage, which is great. Um, in like the actual living space, we have an enormous yard compared to our yard in California. We're on just a little over an acre, which is fantastic for the dogs. Um, and I could have moved to a smaller house and I'm still going to get more warmers. <laughs> it just is what it is. It's just the, the sensey stuff. It's my vice. So no matter what like living situation we're in, um, I'm going to get the warmers. If I want the warmers, I'm going to get them. I will store them. I will alternate them. I will, you know, switch them out throughout the year and stuff. I will enjoy all of the warmers. <laughs> so, but I am lucky in that we did move to a slightly larger home with a lot of outlets. So I am able to um, warm and enjoy my warmers for sure. So hope that helps. <laughs> all right. Next one is from our friend Ashley and Ashley says, may you do an updated review on the air purifier? So again, I will link my most updated, uh, air purifier review down below in the description for you to check out. Uh, <clears throat> I love our air purifiers. They are fantastic. Um, it was something that I figured I would like, but not to the extent that I do. We have eight. <laughs> so that tells you how much I really, truly believe in the product. Um, I, I wanted, I wanted air purifiers in every single room in the house and that's that's what we have so um when you change that air filter for the first time you are i mean for me i i was i was sold i was like yep this is definitely doing its job it's picking up junk and it's picking up junk that i don't have to breathe in so i'll take it <laughs> Okay, next one is from our friend Rachel, and Rachel says, wait now, how do we know if the scents are retiring? Do we check that in our Scentsy workstation? So yeah, we will find out what scents are retiring for the season the month before a new catalog launches. So they will typically, Scentsy will typically put in a like, discontinued list in the workstation. So for us, the next uh, catalog is launching March 1st. So they will launch a discontinuing list in February. So definitely keep your eye on the marketing tab and uh, stay tuned for what is gonna be discontinued. Okay, uh, next one is from our friend Jessica. Jessica says, are you moving to Idaho to work at Sensi Corporate Office? At this point, you guys know, no, <laughs> I am not. I love Sensi. I love being a consultant so much. I, I don't I don't want to work at home office. While everyone at home office is absolutely incredible, I can definitely see the benefits to doing it, but I just, I love being a consultant so much. And I, I love that I live close enough to go visit home office on a regular basis. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just go visit. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't have any intentions on working for home office. Um, like I said, everyone there is amazing. Um, I haven't met a single person at home office that was um, not a complete delight to talk to and hang out with, but I'm super happy with being a consultant. So I'm good. <laughs> so there you have it. That is a year's worth of questions that you guys had. I know this was a really long video, so I do apologize for that, but um, I really wanted to get back into doing the Q and A's with you guys and hanging out and chit chatting. Um, I hope you enjoy it as well. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you do like the Q and A's. If you have a question you would like me to answer in the next Q and A, you can leave your question down below in the comment section of this video, or you can email me your question directly at roberrywax at gmail.com. I'm gonna aim to do, get back on track with doing the Q and A's once a month. So this is it for December, but I'm not gonna wait another year. <laughs> so I will see you guys with the next Q and A sometime in January. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. It means so, so much to me. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like the Q and A. If you're new, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, be sure to hit the notification bell. That way you stay up to date with, well, what's going on around here. <laughs> Have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.